All right, so vine charcoal is the stick. Um, I think it's a willow tree, a branch, and it's burnt out. Sometimes the skin on that branch is a little harder than the, the inside of it. So that's why it's a good idea to, to use a, send, a paper block and send it down. And I like to send it down into a wedge like this. So you have a flat side, but you also have a sharp corner. And when I draw, I always use this side, not that side of that stick. And that way it's always sharpens itself and it stays pretty sharp. If I need to, I twist it a little bit and I use the, the corner like a, a blade. And I can use the tip if I need to, but I can always resharpen it either on the block or as I'm toning things down on the paper. We're also gonna use a kneaded eraser. Uh, I have a couple of other erasers uh, if I need to erase some small areas, or you can use a blade and cut a regular white eraser into a little sharp wedge. <clears throat> and uh, you can work it that way. I'm also gonna use a little tissue because I have a lack uh, toilet tissue because I have a lack of um, um, leathery uh, chamois rag, but you can use a, a t-shirt uh, or a sock, you know, or paper or fingers so <clears throat> to smudge things. I also got a little brush to move uh, the the this charcoal around. <clears throat> so for this uh, assignment, we're just gonna tone this paper and we're only gonna use vine charcoal. And I take the borders of this to give myself a nice border. Once I remove this masking tape, it's gonna already have a nice little uh, frame to it for my drawing. But that means I have to decide what my drawing uh, composition is going to be inside of it. I cannot crop it later as easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use hatch marks and people use it in different ways. Sometimes people take the side of the uh, charcoal and just lay it down and try to uh, go, go across. But I noticed that again, the bark of this is scratching into the paper and I want the pet powder to be just uh, on the surface and not too much um, burnt into the paper. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> go with the nice light hatch marks. Now this paper, I have to admit, is a bristle paper. It's not uh, the 400 series Strathmore paper like I recommended for your homework. And the only reason for that is uh, because it's thicker, it's easier for me to keep these and I want to keep these uh, uh, for a drawing manual that I'm trying to put together with all these, uh, you know, I'm going to do this portrait of this guy uh, many times. Uh, same picture, but different approaches. <clears throat> so we're just trying to cover it. Some people like to cover things more uniformly, so they go with one direction, maybe go in the other direction. Others go in circular motion. And if you have a larger jumbo stick of these uh, vine charcoal that you can get, it's faster to get that tone down. As we're getting the tone down, I don't mind this little bit of texture in there. Uh, I will be able to get rid of some of it, but things don't have to be as perfect as the background in my picture. You know, I put the a wide board behind me to make it nice and clean, but sometimes things are not that nice and clean. That's fine. We don't want to have too much texture in the end, so that's why I'm going to um, actually smooth it out, maybe with toilet paper. But also notice that as I do uh, my marks, there might be a lot of uh, lines, kind of scratchy, the quality to it. I, if I do many layers and if I change direction, it becomes a little bit more even. So just building that up. 
and my my stick is still sharp so I did not uh, affect the sharpness of my tool which is good now I have to think about the tone if you drawing a dark drawing like you will see in a lecture that I'm going to post for you uh, with a dark environment behind you you know you have a spotlight for example on you comparing to the light on your on you the background might be a lot darker then you would have to tone this a lot darker i was looking at uh my reference and again you guys are going to be drawing from from life from the mirror i get to cheat am i shaking the camera uh, i get to cheat and draw from photograph for the consistency of it and I, you know so you can see the 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 reference right there right next to the screen and so on so i am gonna think you know when i thought about this i thought that maybe this tone should not reflect so much the background but reflect this larger middle tone in here and i want that to be flat now one thing to know is that when we start smudging this I'm going to try to, this is a soft uh, tissue in here. When uh, the paper is very clean, it's going to pick up a lot of this material and lighten it quite a bit. So I'm going to flatten this. It's going to push that into the corners, make it a little bit more even, but it, make it a lot lighter also. So you have to put the tone as, that's a little bit darker to begin with. Now again, my paper is a little smoother. So it reacts maybe a little bit differently. And if I was using a shimmy, it would be a little bit smoother. The different papers would create a different type of um, result. So if I don't like how light or how dark the tone is, um, I can change it by smudging it a little bit more with cleaner rug you know it became a little bit darker now so or add uh, more layers on top so as i'm adding the second layer i actually think that this layer is pretty good for the background so i might not add too much over here but add a little bit more on the side where I think the darker tones would be. But I'm not trying to draw at this point. I just need to add the tone. I'm using, uh, by the way, a soft vine charcoal because it's less scratchy and digs in into the paper a lot less. I have to not press too hard. You know, if you have a smaller stick, it would be easier. So you can go like this, but I like to hold back on this. So I'm applying pressure, but it's not too harsh. You know, definitely don't apply so much pressure that you would break it, break the vine chart. It's easy. Don't drop it on the ground. You will break. Also, it's dropping a lot of dust on the ground. So you might want to have a paper towel or something to catch all this dust on the bottom. very powdery. So I'm going to tone a little ghost of the figure, but a little bigger than what I think it, where it should be, because my objective is actually to erase into this. But it, I can start thinking about my composition a little bit already. So I want my head to be somewhere like this. I want the shoulder to be cropped over here. So depending on whether you have a light or a dark um, scene, that you would then um, start the drawing in different ways. You might do it the way that in my lecture, I use my fingers and I start lightening certain areas and you, you literally physically feel 
the surfaces and you start uh, kind of thinking about uh, these shapes and, and the planes as you're modeling things, you know, you feel where the neck is. Uh, so you can do it that way, or you can start by doing a little bit of the drawing. But I'm really cautious about doing drawing with lines because in here we don't want to have lines in the end. So instead, what the drawing that I'm trying gonna try to do would be more like painting, where we actually gonna think about these tonal swatches of planes like the bottom of the nose you don't have to be very uh, accurate we need to just be accurate on the placement so here's my mustache here's the dark tones on the side and here's the beard i'm thinking about this form how we have a, a core shot of walking or walking, going through the center here. Here's my eyebrow. Those are dark tones that I would see in there. And now comparing to these shapes in here, where is my hair? You know, I can think about this backside of the eye socket and where the hair would be. Maybe over here is the mass of the hair. And we're measuring by looking at big shapes. Instead of lines, we're actually looking at shapes. And here I can start suggesting an eye. And again, it's not going to be coming with the line, but rather a little dark mass. Here's a dark mass. It's easier to kind of estimate it rather than trying to start with a very definite line. We estimate where these different um, tonal spots would be. And little by little, we're gonna just end up mer uh, kind of uh, uh, getting the forms and image out of this. And let's let's do a little bit more of the dark tone on the throat. The side of the the beard is going to be dark, and we're going to get a little bit of darker tone, especially in the shadow of the uh, green shirt. Here, I'm going to draw a little line for myself as a as a reference. Don't need it to be too too specific though. The shoulders always higher than where we expect them to be. And we're, we're getting this ghost uh, appearing over there. And uh, before I, I do anything else, I'm going to try to erase the light lights for myself, uh, not just with the finger, but with the eraser, just to see how light I can get. I'm trying not to erase too hard, but just enough with the needed eraser to, to feel the planes and feel the difference. And I can see already the, the, a lot of the charcoal got dug in to the paper. So it stained the paper. The paper is no longer perfectly white, but it has a nice quality to it. It's maybe we want to have light for the highlights, but remember how old uh, pencil drawings, we had a lot of white paper, untouched paper. In this case, everything is touched, everything is worked. So it feels more kind of uh, uh, like you spend plenty of time finding all of this interesting uh, textures. So in here, I'm gonna, not gonna try to make everything super light, but I'm just kind of trying to build the lighter values in the area where I see a lot of intensity for these. And here we have light coming over the cheekbone. 
and I just wedge my kneaded eraser as I, I try to draw with it, little planes. Gets a little bit lighter there. You know, completely erasing the eyebrow, and that's fine because we can always draw it back, right? But I want to feel that form of the temple bone, maybe a little highlight um, on the lower lip, and a little bit of a like to describe the, the lips. With a little tip now, something like this on the chin perhaps. And it, this light is, beautiful light starts to emerge. Now, after I do a little bit of this, you know, I can think about now with my finger, to erase a little bit of the light on this cheek, which is not gonna be as light as this side. So I'm gonna keep it fairly different in here. And now what I'd suggest, just like with the pencil drawing, what, what are my darkest darks? Vine charcoal doesn't go very dark. It's nice to combine it with compressed charcoal so you can get darker values. But what can we get out of vine charcoal? So we're going to look at uh, some ambient occlusion of different local color areas and see how dark can you get with this. So I'm going to press down now with my finger just to see if I, if I put this as dense as I can, what are my limitations of this material? What kind of contrast I can get from light to dark? And I'm going to push some of these areas in here. Here, this is not quite as dark as the beard, perhaps. Ambient occlusion right here in the eye socket. This is whenever we put these marks, we have to be careful thinking about the placement. Are we getting the placement right? Measure these distances. Here's ambient occlusion of this crack. And here is the eyelashes wrapping around. Again, this area for um, the eye. And I can start thinking about how we're we wrapping things around these forms. So we're not just uh, looking at dark shapes, but we are using a little bit of um, contour hatching, the directional marks. In the painting, you would re really do that. Use these uh, directional larger strokes. So we want to sculpt. Now I'm using all these sculpt paint. Uh, you know, they all relate to each other because so you're trying to model it's called plastic arts. You're modeling plasticity. You're mo modeling the movement of the form. Here's a little bit of the cheekbone in here. And uh, here's the tip of the nose gets a little bit darker. You definitely got to get the dark tone for the nostril. I don't need to complete all of it. I just wanted to have some reference. I gotta get even darker here. Maybe around the nostril, which is in relationship to this uh, corner of the eyes, a little bit farther away. So you gotta get that um, placement, hopefully pretty good. And making the nose maybe a little longer, I'm not sure. Um, I think I gotta push my forehead a little bit out more from here. Nope. 
And I'm gonna look at the, the background and think of whether it needs to be lighter or not. And what I notice is that, yes, it needs to be darker than these lights that I created. I don't wanna go back and forth too much on it. So I want it to stay a little bit darker than the lights. And I can just lighten it up just a little bit more as I'm flattening it with my, you know, my second clean finger and my third clean finger. It's pretty soon you're gonna run out of clean fingers. That's all right, you got 10. So we can flatten it a little bit. And like I said, I got the little brush in here. If you don't want to use the fingers, you can see how you can push things around with a brush. But it doesn't pick up um, as well as the fingers. Now in here, I purposely made it a little bit wider. So we have to start erasing a little bit. Uh, to to get the shape that we want. And you can go back and forth if you erase too much. You can always add. But another good thing is that as you erase, yeah, you're going to make it lighter, but eventually your neat eraser becomes very bland, uh, black and you start just blending with it. It's no longer pick up, picks up the charcoal. You just smudge and blend with it. So you're pushing things around, making this a little bit flatter. And we need to really decide where we want things to be flat and where do we want to have texture. So getting rid of some lines, you know, trying to keep things fairly soft and warm especially in the beginning. So I'm gonna add a little bit of a circular motion around my eye here. And the eye, the cheek, the nose, the mouth is the things that need to come out towards us the most. The things that are in the background, they can stay fairly light. That's why I'm so against outlines, especially in these more uh, artworks that are about the light. It's just so you can feel how things uh, move in and out of space. So around the eye, I'm going to travel around the orbit. Or contra hatching in the round direction. Also, the vine charcoal is so soft that when you move across these forms, you're also pushing it around. You're also smoothing it, getting rid of the harsh edges. And then you have to press down to get the harsh edges back in. And I think my eyeball is not in the right place. I got to push it more to the side. The eyeball, by the way, notice it's not going to be white. So you don't rush into making it white. There's few light highlights, but it's not white. This side of the eyeball is in the shadow. So I've got to get that darker. Don't be afraid to push the darks because they're so easily get lighter in vine charcoal. Here's the darker side of my skull. And I can add a little bit of darker tones for the back of the head, starting to frame the head a little bit and push it out to get the right size for my skull. Get a little bit lighter right there. too light. And the more back and forth finessing you're doing, the more you're 
you know, probably find those subtleties and, and the differences between the different areas. So don't be afraid to, to push and move the these, um, different planes around. Flatten it out when in doubt, and then uh, add the information back. I'm going to put the, a line in here for the core shadow. So we see the front of the face, it's slightly in the light, even though the nose is actually casting a shadow like this onto it. It's, again, the light is very soft from the window, very broad. If you have a spotlight, like I, I asked you in the homework, you're going to get the more easy to see um, cast shadows and core shadows should be a lot easier to do the, the seven elements of light. I'm gonna add a little bit of local color for the mustache. Again, I'm just thinking about the direction rather than trying to get individual hairs in there. Shape, direction, how the left and the right side relate. So we're trying to get accurate proportions more or less. Uh, I'm gonna move to this eye over here. So I'm thinking about these planes, how they move around the eyeball. using the sharper tip of this, just wrapping things around. Okay. Kind of bulging eyes now. And uh, now I see that I need to you know, I was doing these eye in relationship to this eye. Now I need to uh, find where my silhouette of the body would actually be. It needs to come out a little bit more. My initial estimation was not 100%. So we're shifting things. I think I can shift the bottom of this to a little bit getting a little sharper corner on there. And everything in here will be very subtle, very light. Now, to, to be more precise, you, you take your sharp point and you place it on the paper, and then uh, you start moving it to, to see where exactly is the line being drawn. And I tilt it to one edge or the other, so I know exactly where the line is starting to, to be being drawn. And I ask myself, is that the right place? And I keep stretching it and get a little bit lighter here. But you, you don't have to make very crude, fast marks. You can say, OK, I want to start to draw in here. OK, is that the right place? And your eyes keep going back to your reference. Now uh, that means you have to hold still and not move your head too much, right? But I'm cheating with the picture. You guys have to forgive me now. And here. You draw from life so you can learn better, better skills. And here, let's um, put 
foreshadow at the corner of the lip. The whole upper lip is darker than the lower lip. Let's draw a corner underneath the lower lip and you've got some hair in there. So you're getting all these planes. And this is pretty dark all around the bottom of the mouth barrel. It's not reflecting as much light into this area. So that's pretty dark, including all of our core shadows in here. Let's find uh, the other side of the head with the ear, ear lobe. And here is it in relationship to the nose, something like this. Now, where are the spots inside the ear? You can also look at the background as a plane of light and ask yourself, what is lighter, the left or the right side? And sometimes it's nice to have a gradation. And it would be not a bad thing if it was lighter next to the shadow and a little bit darker next to the light by a little bit, right? Uh, so we want to uh, add a little bit more visual contrast to this image, right? How am I doing here? I have to double check my proportions. I think I gotta widen this area on the face a bit too. It's interesting, the background is lighter here than the face, so it flips. So I gotta get slightly darker value underneath the mouth barrel in here. Just a little bit lighter on top of the chin. And the rest of it is finesse. So you would finesse this. Usually vine charcoal serves as uh, under drawing for other contrasting uh, charcoals. It's also a very soft material, so it smudges very easily. It's very hard to store without destroying it. You know, it's probably best to store it on a wall somewhere. Otherwise, it just smudges. Or you have to fix it with a workable fixative, for example, a spray it outside because it's pretty toxic uh, and uh, but it does change the surface Work, workable fixative makes it a little bit darker darker and more textured so you have to kind of ask yourself do you want to do that now? but nowadays i'm happy with uh, taking a photograph and, and then just watch the drawing get destroyed over time Well, my artwork lives on Instagram. So. But if you can put it on a wall somewhere, that's great. If you use the other charcoals, though, it does help to fix it into place. So charcoals like compressed charcoal, they don't smudge as much. You can, Combine it with Conti, which is even better in terms of adhering to the, the paper. And eventually you can get into adding some texture. So for the hair, I'm not trying to draw individual hair, but I'm trying to add some texture. Uh, to it, like uh, the direction of the hair on top. You can break it up, break it up a little bit, this edge, 
And it actually suggests to me uh, what kind of type of hair I have. It's like a hair cut that was uh, a, little, a few weeks, a few weeks old. Thank you. Now, if we have some really light highlights, like uh, we have in the eye, for example, I can start going in there once I know where exactly my shapes are, and I can start erasing some of it. Now, some erasers are harder than others. And uh, I did a test on this paper too. They're pretty much very similar to kneaded eraser. Uh, but I got this, you know, this is almost like a pan, but it's still pretty soft eraser. So we're getting close to the paper and it looks white enough in contrast to everything around that it feels like the white of the paper. There's a little bit of the light on the other side, but it's not as light. So I don't want to make it too, too light. Again, remember the, um, the eyeballs are not white. In fact, now I'm looking at the lip value and the lip value is too light. So I would want to probably get rid of it altogether. Make it a little bit darker. Start finding some of my ambient occlusion cracks in the lips. So this is where you have to keep it pretty sharp and uh, start cutting it almost like a blade with the edge. Finessing, finessing subtleties in there. And really pushing the darker values, I have to press down quite a bit. As we get the if we get the pupils in the eyes, the eyes right away start to look, become alive. They're looking in a particular direction, so they start to gaze. You know, Self-portraits, you're gazing at yourself, so you're gazing at the viewer. That's pretty intense. Have a, emotional connection. Or no. So we can spend a bit of time, you know, the uh, every portrait that I draw, I, I show you the beginning of the process, but usually I go back to it and I look at it and I notice new things and I, and I add more. So the longer I sit in front of um, myself looking, the more I start to notice.
All right, let me sit back and take a look at it for a second. Um, gosh, I had lots of things to correct. Soften this, maybe shift it a bit. I'm gonna find a cheekbone location. Uh, the reflected light may be too light and uh, we want to sculpt the jaw. Sculpt the neck. Still lots, lots to do, right? So you have to spend time to develop all of those nuances. Look at it again. What are we doing with the shirt? Might you have to consider all of these um, subtleties in here in relationship to the face. Otherwise, it's, it's just going to look. I, I put a line in here. I probably don't want that line. I just want to change your values. This whole neck is in the shadow, only that side is in the light. But even then, by the time it gets from the top to the bottom, the neck gets darker. You see some lines wrapping around the bottom of the Adam's apple. There's a cast shadow from underneath the head. I want to include all those aspects. When I get to the beard, I can start playing around with a texture in the beard, and if I put a couple of lines in there, that works quite nicely too. But I can layer that. So I get a little bit of lights, a little bit of shadows. More shadows on the right side. No light in the, you know, I see some light uh, gray hairs of my beard on the right, but it's in the shadows. So I don't want to put a white like I did in the light. So I, I keep those um, just as a little bit of a, this lighter versus darker tones, but not all the way to white. And that's what gives us a more directional light source. We don't want to overdo that. And, uh, I'm going to use the eraser and just draw a little bit into here. Let's see if we can do something with the brush. And get rid of some of those textures. Let's make it a bit lighter. With this material, you can be brave. You can be braver because you know if you don't like something. You can just smudge it and redo it. A little plane of reflected light on the bottom, or is it light on the shirt? The only reason why I don't like um, this uh, eraser versus kneaded eraser, kneaded eraser doesn't leave any. Um, residue, the rubber residue. You can't wipe the rubber junk off of uh, fine charcoal drawing. This is just going to smudge your drawing.
Now, another thing you can use is a paper stump. And that is a really useful tool. So instead of your finger, at some point, you might want to start use, using something smaller. With paper stump, you can lighten things and draw as if it was a, you know, a pencil. In fact, you can sand the paper stump. It's a tw twisted paper. You can sand it down back to the clean paper. But I can start adjusting and correcting some of these tones. If it's really dirty, well, you can draw with it too. But it's like a little tiny smudging tool. Right? Okay. For corrections. Now you can also sand your tool to a, a really sharp point. Right now it's getting a little bit dull over there. But I can uh, send it down into a really sharp tool. You guys can do that anytime. I, th I think it's underrated. You know, professionals know it and they do that a lot. They sharpen tools to really nice points that they know they can get nice quality lines out of. But in the beginning, people don't spend enough time on it. A lot of people use these shavings also for um, toning their ground and so on. Now, the only thing is after I send it like this, I have to wipe off my uh, uh, material, my tool, because there's a lot of very loose, very dark powder on there. I can sharpen it even sharper than that. And then I can go in and there with my nail on the surface, not my skin, and uh, start uh, again. I place it down and I can start dragging a sharper line. I can get sharper details out of this. You don't need sharp details everywhere, but once you start putting some few sharper details here and there, it makes your drawing feel a lot more detailed. As I go down like this, I make it uh, gives me sharper lines for the texture, but it also sharpens my tool on the paper. I can apply a little bit more pressure for darker lines.
shadow, shadow. Shadow over here. But I think one of the advantages of this is that you're learning to work with different sizes of contrast. So you're working on large shapes, large shapes of light and large shapes of dark. You're working on softer edges versus sharper detail. And it, it's a different approach to the drawing than uh, a lot of the linear uh, drawings that we've done so far with the graphite pencil. So it, it allows you to loosen up with your drawing and uh, build it in a different way. And it's very close to a la prima painter, painting techniques where you paint by putting larger shapes and then you, sh you shape it by shifting the edges. So again, I can continue with uh, developing this and uh, I you know, can get a little bit more brave into uh, some areas like get some darker tones on this um, area of the skull, for example. You know, I can start shaping it, lightening it if I, if I get too dark. Going like that back and forth, I learn how to move edges, correct things, how to feel the, the sculpting qualities of these uh, different parts. You know, I'm exploring, I'm, I'm uh, doing things on paper. And, you know, you're drawing with a stick, so you're right up against this paper. Uh, and you're, you have to kind of feel the, how the surface, um, how you put the material onto the surface. Yeah, get really dark and get, oops, there you go, too dark, pressing too hard. <laughs> Really dark, soften. This whole side of the face is darker with uh, half tones. Changing direction just blends the texture of the smart making for me. Try to put the core shadow and cast shadow over here. And the core shadow. Subtle core shadow in here. Very subtle on uh, this picture, so it's not easy to see for sure.
So it's uh, it's not done. I can do a lot more explorations in there. Like I said, usually you move on to charcoal pencils and you can refine things and fix it in. But I really want you to just take the time moving the charcoal around. Feel free. Vine charcoal is such a wonderful material that you can easily adjust and fix things. If I, if I want to, I can just smudge the whole thing and restart. Um, you know, if, if in the beginning, I don't like the size, I don't, I don't like the proportions that I got. Um, you know, I, I'm tempted to, to do that. Here. But I can see if I can resolve my proportional problems uh, if I keep finessing it. Right. Let me stop the recording.